Okay, now let's run a regression to predict the inverse rank. Remember, we converted the 1 to an 18, the 18 to a 1, etc. That's in column J here. From the indicator or dummy variables that tell us what constitutes the 18 product profiles. So we'd go data, data analysis, regression. And you'll see there's a lot of information unlocked in this regression output. Okay, so now the Y range, hit that little button, is going to be the inverse rank. Remember, the last product now becomes an 18. The X range, they have to be in adjacent columns. Through row 38. We can take a look at the residuals. Perhaps we do have labels. We could say new worksheet. We'll call this regression one. Okay. All right, so now let's make this a little bigger. Okay, so now is the regression what we call a good regression? First of all, what's the equation? Well, it's right here. So the predicted inverse rank would equal that intercept 4.83 minus 4.5a plus 3.5b minus 1.5 brand 1. You might say, what happened to c? We'll get to that. All these coefficients are interpreted relative to what was left out. Minus 2 times brand 2 plus 7.66, we'll just say 7.67 times the price of $1.19 plus 4.83 times the price of $1.39 plus 1.5 approval plus 4.5 guarantee. Now the question is, does this equation make good predictions? But how would you do the predictions? So if you had brand A, sorry, design A, brand 2, and a $1.59 price, with a guarantee and no approval. Well, then you would say A equals 1 in this equation, BR2 equals 1, and then the prices of a dollar, all prices would be 0 in this equation because it's $1.59. And then you would say guarantee equals 1 and approval equals 0. So what you get would be a 4.83 you get minus a 4.5 for the A, a minus 2 for the brand 2, nothing for the prices, and the guarantee would give you a 4.5, and we predict that would be ranked uh, as a pretty poor product, because mainly because of the high price, and it doesn't have the uh, approval. See, that be, again, for, the formula for that, let's check that out. We took a 4.83, and brand A was the worst brand. Okay, uh, sorry, design A was the worst design. Brand 2 was the worst brand. We did throw in a guarantee that helped save us there. But still, that with a high price, and we have the uh, worst brand, and we have the worst design, we don't expect that product to rank very well. Okay, well, the question is, are all these variables significant? Yes, all p-values less than 0.1. So that's great. Okay, and do we explain a lot of the variation in the customer's rank? That's very, not always do we get a high R squared, but here we do. R squared of 0.98. Our model explains 98% of the variation in the person's ranks called the inverse rank. Only 2% is unexplained. Now, what would it mean if you got a low R squared in a conjoint analysis, say 0.5? Well, that would mean half the variation in the customer's ranking wasn't explained by the variables you used, which means you're probably not using the variables that matter to the customer. Okay, and that happens, I think, in the airline industry, where they used to think the food mattered a lot, which it didn't, okay, because now they don't give us food. But basically, what matters the most to people is safety and on time, particularly on time. And so basically, if you get a lower square, you have to think about, do you have the proper variables here? Okay, 
So we've got a nice R squared. We've got all low p values, which is great. And then the standard error is 0.95. Again, what that means is 95% of our forecast we did one of those forecasted ranks up, up above. 95% of our forecasted ranks should be accurate within 1.9 or 2. And that's pretty good out of 18. And you can look at the residuals here, the actuals minus predicted. We were never off by more than 2. Okay, none of those numbers are off by more than 2. And again, the sum of the residuals in a regression is always going to be 0, the actual minus predicted. So e to the minus 14. Okay, now we get to the really meat of the issue, which is basically what we can, can we learn from this regression? Well, we can rank the product attributes. And then within each attribute, rank the levels. So what's the most important attribute? When I ask this in courses I teach at companies, almost everybody gets it wrong. They just say price, because everybody thinks price is most important. Well, the answer is package design. You look at the spread from the worst level of the attribute to the best. So the worst package design is A, minus 4.5. The best is B, which is a three and a half. C is like a zero in the middle. We'll get to that later. But the spread on package design is eight. And so that is the most spread. And then comes price. So the worst price would have a coefficient of zero at $1.59. The best price at $1.19. 7.67. So the spread from the best level of price is 7.67 minus the worst level of price. So that would be the second most important. Now, brand does not matter that much here. This would be bad. Okay, this would be uh, brand. No, that, no, that would uh, be, so that's okay. Then minus 1.5 brand one. See, the spread in brand goes... Minus 2 to 0, that's not much. Guarantee has more importance. And then would come brand where the spread would be from 0 to minus 2, the best level being 0. And then we would have the good housekeeping approval is the least important. Okay. So we've ranked the attributes, then we want to rank the level within each attribute. Okay. And then we'll talk about value-based pricing in the next video. So we'll have the levels ranked. Okay. So you look at design. What's the best design? Well, B, because it has a plus three and a half. Now, what's second best? C has a zero. That means it's uh, B is three and a half better than C. A is four and a half worse. So C is second. And then A. Now, price, it's obvious $1.19 has the most positive benefit than the next highest price and then the lowest price. Uh, sorry, the medium price is the next best price and the highest price is the worst price. Now, guarantee is better than no guarantee. Now, what brand's the best? Well, it's brand three, because that's left out. It's like a zero. And brand two is the worst, because it's two worse. So brand three is the best. Then the next best would be brand one, and then brand two. And then the approval beats no approval. OK, in the next video, we'll talk about how you can use the conjoint regression equation to price products, which I think is really interesting, because it gives you an idea of value-based pricing. Used a lot in the computer business, the car business, and the uh, P&G consumer packaged goods business to really figure out when you add an attribute to a product, what can you add to the price? Like if you have a mouthwash that can whiten versus a mouthwash that can't whiten, how much can you charge? Again, if you add the top, the top of the line tires to a luxury car versus the non-top of the line tires, how much more can you charge? And value-based pricing from conjoint is often used to solve those pricing problems. Okay, so thanks for watching. And, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston. Um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 
355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.